Hello and welcome to this session of physics dealing with chapter 19, radioactivity, for the third secondary classes, sections LS and GS. By the end of this session, you will be able to explain the radioactive disintegration, characterize alpha, beta, and gamma emissions, define the activity of a radioactive element, define the period of a radionuclide, and state the law of radioactive decay. Radioactivity was discovered independently by Henri Becquerel and Marie Curie in 1896. It is defined as the spontaneous disintegration of an unstable atomic nucleus or a radio element such as uranium, plutonium, polonium. An unstable element decays emitting particles such as alpha, or radiation such as gum. Proceeding to Soddy's laws, where the law of conservation of mass number states that the mass number of the parent nucleus should be the same as the mass number of the daughter nucleus and the emitted particles. And the law of conservation of atomic number states that the atomic number of the parent nucleus should be the same as the atomic number of the daughter nucleus and the emitted particles. What all of that means is the following. Take a look at this reaction where uranium disintegrates into thorium and a certain element or particle X. To identify this X, we have to find A and Z. We use those laws, law of conservation of mass, 235 equals to 231 plus A, right there. So that means A equals to 4. And then 92 equals to 90 plus Z, so Z equals 2. So 2, 4 x to 4 is nothing but helium. Now gamma emitters, symbolized by this Greek letter, gamma ray is an electromagnetic radiation that is emitted when a nucleus decays from a high energy level to a lower one. We call this the de-excitation of the nucleus, whenever a parent nucleus in the excited state decays into a daughter nucleus to a lower energy level then it releases gamma radiation. Examples such as iodine, you see that star over here, it indicates it's in the excited state, disintegrate, disintegrates to more stable iodine releasing gamma. Radium over here in the excited state, disintegrates into radium into more stable state and releasing gamma as well. Proceeding to alpha emitters, Alpha emitters are elements that decay emitting alpha particles. This is the general equation of an element X decaying into another element Y and emitting alpha. An example is when uranium disintegrates into thorium and yielding alpha and we say uranium is an alpha emitter. Usually alpha emitters should have, should possess a mass number of more than 200. They should be heavy. And we often see gamma radiation accompanying alpha particles. So whenever we see alpha, usually we notice gamma radiation lurking with them. Beta minus emitters are nuclei that as they decay into a daughter nucleus, emit beta minus particles. We call those beta minus electrons. Beta emitters should be rich in neutrons so that they are able to emit electrons. As a decay from neutron to protons, in this reaction, we notice that we have this beta minus particle. And we notice that antineutrinos, another particle, accompanies the emission of beta minus radiation. General equation of a beta minus emitter. An example is this, where carbon disintegrates into nitrogen, 6, 7, so that must be minus 1. So that is an electron. And whenever we see an electron, or beta minus, we have to see with it an anti-neutrino. 
Same thing to beta plus emitters. Whenever a parent nucleus decays into a daughter one, and it emits beta plus particles, or positrons, as we call them, we call that nucleus a beta plus emitter. Beta plus emitters should be rich in protons, and the reason is as protons decay into neutrons, they emit, if you do the math, so these laws, one, zero, so that must be a one over here, a plus one, and that is a positron. And we notice that neutrinos now accompany beta positive, beta plus radiation. This is the general equation of beta plus radiation. And this is an example where boron, five, decays into beryllium, four, so that must be a plus one. So that is a positron, and we know it is accompanied by a neutrino. When it comes to penetrating power, alpha could be stopped by a piece of paper, while beta is more energetic, penetrates this piece of paper, and could be stopped by an aluminum sheet. While gamma radiation is way more energetic and wouldn't be able to be stopped by a wall of lead. Moving to the law of radioactive decay, we notice that the decay curve is exponential. It decays as such, slowly and gradually dies down, with n being n0 e minus lambda t. That means that n, the number of nuclei left at a given instant, decays exponentially, starting with n0, which is the initial number of nuclei present at t equals 0. And this is all explained by this minus dn, if you wish by dt, equals to lambda n. Moving on to period or half-life, that's the time interval after which one half of the radioactive substance disintegrates. Meaning after, if we start with n0, after one half-life, which we call t, n0 over 2 would be left. After two half-lives, n0 over 4 would be left. After three half-lives, n0 over 8, and keep on going. And this is what we call this exponential decay. Lambda, we call the decay constant. It's defined as lin2 over t, where t is the half-life. An example is this. 100 grams, after one half-life, whatever that half-life is, could be 10 years, we'd be left with 50 grams. After another 10 years, we'd be left with 25 grams. After another 10 years, we'd be left with half of whatever we had over here, 12.5. And to figure out either of those numbers, all we do is follow this equation. n equals n0 over 2 power n with n being t over big T. t stands for the Total time lapsed and T, the half-life. Examples of some half-lives. We have half-lives of uranium, for example, in billions of years. We have half-lives in thousands of years, just as in carbon's case. We have half-lives in days for polonium, in minutes for lead, and in seconds for this isotope of nitrogen. Moving on to activity, which is the number of disintegrations emitted per unit time. And one disintegration every second is 1 BQ after Henri Becquerel. And 1 Curie is worth 3.7 times 10 power 10 Becquerel. And one device that measures this activity is what we call Geiger counter. And activity is the rate at which the number of those nuclei disintegrate per second. It's minus dn by dt. And previously we agreed that dn is minus lambda n dt. By dt by dt. So the activity is left with lambda, the decay constant, times n. And if we replace n by its value n0 e minus lambda t, we end up having a equals a0 times e power minus lambda t. Another helpful equation. 
proceeding to decay family, if after disintegration the created daughter nucleus is itself radioactive, then this nucleus disintegrates into another daughter nucleus, which can be also radioactive, and again it disintegrates and it keeps on doing so. Such as thorium decays into radium emitting alpha, radium into actinium emitting beta minus, actium into thorium emitting beta minus, and then thorium decays into radium, and they keep on going, radium into polonium, polonium into lead, and so on, until we reach a daughter nucleus which is stable. In this scenario, it's lead. These successive disintegrations from thorium to radium to actinium and so on will stop whenever the daughter nucleus is stable. And we call that DK family or DK series. This is an exercise. To put things into context, consider a sample containing 32 times 10 power 18 of radioactive nitrogen nuclei of half-life 7 seconds. If you were to calculate the decay constant, if you recall the decay constant is lambda, and lambda is lin2 over t, so we have t, just plug it in here, it's 7, plug it, you obtain that number. If you were to calculate the number of radioactive nuclei left in the sample after 21 seconds, then we use this formula, n equals n0, e minus lambda t, with n0 being 32 times 10 power 18, e power lambda is right there, t 21 seconds, and you obtain 4 times 10 power 18 nuclei. Deduce the activity of the sample, the third and last question, after 21 seconds. The activity is lambda n, lambda is right there, we have obtained it in the first question, times n number of nuclei, and you obtain 3.9 times 10 power 17 becquerel. Proceeding to another application exercise from our book, some atomic numbers of elements are given in this table, such as polonium, atomic number 84, a state, atomic number 85, and so on. You have several questions to answer, the first of which is the following. The francium-223 isotope is the most abundant. What is meant by isotope of a chemical element? Isotopes are nuclei having the same atomic number Z, or same number of protons, but different mass number A, or different number of nucleons. Now determine the number of protons and the number of neutrons present in the nucleus of this isotope. The number of protons is 87. It's given right there. This is the atomic number. While the number of neutrons, it's A minus Z. And A being 2 to 3 over here, minus 87 protons, indicating we have 136 neutrons. Now, the preceding isotope has a half-life of 22 minutes. Its mass in, in a radioactive sample at t equals 0 is 10 power minus 7 grams. Express the mass of this francium isotope remaining at the end of 10 minutes. Using this formula, m0 being this, 10 power minus 7, 2 power t over t, t, the time we need after 10 minutes, the half-life is 22 minutes, right there given, so you just get that answer. Nearly all the atoms of francium, 2 to 3, disintegrate with the emission of beta minus particles. What is the equation of the corresponding nuclear reaction? We give the name of the daughter nucleus obtained. So we have to write down this equation, francium is a beta minus emitter, so it emits beta minus, and we know that beta minus is accompanied by antineutrino, and to figure out this, we just do SOTDIS, apply SOTDIS laws, do the math, and we obtain A to be 2 to 3, and Z to be 88. And from the given table, we go back to the given table, and we know that 87 is nothing but radium. Part D, a very small proportion of francium, 2 to 3 atoms, 4 in a million, disintegrate with the emission of alpha particles. What is the equation of the corresponding nucleus? So we write francium, decays emitting alpha, and a certain element, which, if you were 
uh, to justify how we got it. Again, using sub these laws, we figure out a and a over here and z, and it turns out that this element to be a state. What we've acquired is that radioactivity is the spontaneous disintegration of a non-stable nucleus, the parent nucleus, into another more stable nucleus, the daughter nucleus. During decay, there's conservation of mass number, atomic number. When a nucleus decays from a state into another, having an energy level lower than the initial one, gamma radiations are formed, and they are photons. Alpha particles are emitted by heavy nuclei of atomic mass more than 200, and those alpha are called are helium nuclei. Beta minus particles are electrons emitted by rich by nuclei rich in neutrons, and their emission is accompanied by that of anti-neutrinos. Beta plus radiations, beta plus particles, are positrons emitted by nuclei rich in protons. Their emission is accompanied by that of neutrinos. Radioactive decay is given by n equals n0 e minus lambda t, and this is called the decay law. The activity of a radioactive substance is the number of disintegrations per unit time. It's expressed in Becquerel, and this relation governs the activity. And the period or half-life of a radioactive substance is the time interval after which one half of the radioactive substance disintegrates. And we know that the half-life is lin2 over lambda.